What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to another video lesson. In this one we'll discuss the third topic you guys voted for on patreon.com slash Bernd for this month, rhythm workouts. We talked quite a lot about different shredding tricks, licks, exercises and techniques over the last couple of weeks and it's about time that we focus on developing our rhythm skills once more. So today I want to teach you a killer riff in 7-8 that I composed for this lesson. This one will help you a lot with understanding odd meters in general, it's a great alternate picking workout and of course it will tighten up your rhythm in general. So let's get started right away. Way. Usually we were focusing on exercises and workouts when we talked about rhythm before on this channel. But for this video I want to keep it more practical and musical by showing you an actual riff. There are two super important concepts hidden in there that will help you a lot with your rhythm playing in general. But before we get to analyzing them let's check out the section in detail. I recorded it in two different tempos for you. You can download the tabs, get the profiles and practice backing tracks on patreon.com slash Bernd. My patrons also get individual coaching via email and gold members get to vote on the lesson topics each month. This riff is actually based on a drum pattern that I had in mind and it has a very percussive and energetic vibe. As I said before, this riff is composed in the odd meter of 7-8 and if you've never heard or worked with odd meters like that before, let me explain them real quick first. I'm pretty sure that you already heard about time signatures in general. The most commonly used time signature is 4-4 and to make sure that we're on the same page, let's define what that actually means real quick. In a composition that is utilizing the 4-4 time signature, I essentially have four quarter notes available to work with every single measure. So I can do pretty much anything I want with technically in there as long as the sum of all total notes adds up to the same value of four quarter notes. As a basic example I could also play eight eighth notes instead or 16 sixteenth notes or two quarter notes and four eighth notes and so on. The very intimidating sounding odd meter of 7-8 actually works exactly the same. The only difference is that I have 7 eighth notes now to work with each measure and not 4 quarter notes. The reason why it's a bit more difficult to compose and play in this time signature is because our ears are missing that one additional eighth note that will turn this into a 4, four time signature. So the odd grouping of 7 eighth notes each measure sounds much more unstable to our ears than the common concept of grouping 4 quarter notes or 8 eighth notes. As a super quick comparison I will play a group of 7 and then a group of 8 for you now. So for example groups of 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, as opposed to groups of 8 or 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, the first thing I want you to understand when you practice the riff for this lesson is something that I already did subconsciously when I played the group of 7 for you. When I play, compose or just improvise in an odd meter, I never count up to the full number to stay in time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. As you can see that's very counterintuitive. I always dissect the patterns into smaller groups of 2, 3 or even 1 as shown with the riff. That way it won't just be much easier to stay in time, you will also come up with some much more creative ideas. One idea that I can immediately think of in 7-8 is grouping 2-2-3-3-2-2. Two, two, three, three, two, two. So instead of just playing 1-2-3-4-5-6-7-1-2-3-4-5-6-7 I could play 2-2-3 two, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, followed by 3-2-2 three, 1-2-3-1-2-1-2 two, two. Two, when I combine those two very basic ideas, I already come up with a super interesting pattern in 7-8. I'm starting each little group with a downstroke right here to stay in time. So there's always a downstroke after the groups of 3-2, so I can accent the first note of the next group. So 1-2-3-1. One, two, three, one. The second thing I want you to learn with the practical example is a different concept concerning the placing of the down and up strokes. If you paid close attention to the practical example, you will have noticed that I was playing continuous down and up strokes for the entire riff. So I made sure to fill up the holes where I'm not placing any accents or playing any real notes with dead notes. By that I can keep the movement with my right hand going, which is very beneficial here. The reason why becomes very clear when I'm only playing accents for you and this is the biggest takeaway of this lesson. 
it is very hard to figure out yourself where to place the down and up strokes when you play this fast. When you play it at a slow tempo it won't matter that much, you can just use down strokes for example. But it already feels really strange for me to play these syncopated notes with a downstroke and I don't think that I could lock in tightly with the drums or with the rhythm section in general if I played it this way. And of course I also won't be able to speed it up that much with only downstrokes even if I'm that guy. So I want to learn how to perform it with alternate picking. So whenever you encounter a very difficult rhythmic pattern with a lot of rest in there and you can't really figure out where to place your down and up strokes, make sure to fill up those rests with dead notes and keep that constant down and up motion going with your right hand and see where the down and up strokes fall naturally. So for example when I try to speed up that pattern with alternate picking, I could just play dead notes instead of tight notes and I would get that result. If I keep practicing that I will memorize where the down and up strokes are falling and I can speed it up eventually. And that is much easier for me right now because I'm in that mindset of continuous down and up strokes. So once again those are the two things I want you to memorize for this lesson. Whenever you encounter an odd meter make sure to break it down into smaller groups in order to stay in time and to come up with some creative patterns within that. And whenever you're not sure how to place your down and up strokes with complicated rhythms with a lot of rests, make sure to fill up those rests with dead notes, stay in the continuous mindset of playing 8th or 16th notes if possible and see where the down and up strokes are falling naturally. I really hope that you enjoyed this lesson about rhythm and odd meters. Please let me know if I should feature this topic more often in the monthly video lesson topic topic votings on Patreon. In the end make sure to subscribe to join this YouTube community today and to never miss another free guitar lesson again. Leave a like in case you enjoyed the video or in case you learned something new and a comment in case you have any open questions. I try to answer as many as I can. I will hopefully see you in the next video lesson. All the best until then and have a lot of fun practicing.